afternoon. Um, it's a few minutes afternoon, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for today's webinar on Loudoun County's home improvements and repair programs. This is the third of four webinars for Home Ownership Month, and we're so glad that you've decided to join us today. My name is Christine Hillock, and I'm the Housing Initiatives Project Manager with the Department of Housing and Community Development. A few notes about today's webinar setup. Cameras and mics for participants as well as the chat are disabled for this meeting. The link for closed captioning was sent in advance. If you would like to view captions, you can just click on the link and they will appear in a separate browser. Today's session is being recorded and transcribed and we do plan to post the recording for all of the sessions for Homeownership Month online at a later date. This presenter is my colleague, Ryan Van Patten. If Ryan, if you could come on camera to say hello. Ryan um, is, the, uh, is our Community Development Project Manager with the Department of Housing and Community Development, and he oversees our home improvement and repair programs, as well as some special projects related to our Unmet Housing Needs Strategic Plan. We're also joined today by Melinda Niebel, who is the County's Fair Housing Coordinator. Melinda, if you want to say hello to the folks, come on camera for a minute. There's Melinda. Um, our fair housing coordinator position is a new position that was added this year, and we're very happy to have Melinda on the team and in this role as a, a new resource for the community. She'll be helping with webinar management today. So thank you, Melinda. Um, we will have some time for questions uh, at the end of the session today. We had we got a few questions in advance and we'll have some time uh, to uh, discuss those with Ryan at the end of the session. If you have additional questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we will provide direct contact information at the end of the session for Ryan. Um, and you can always uh, contact us at the Department of Housing via our general uh, mailbox, which is housing at loudon.gov or you can give us a call at our main number, which is 703-737-8323. And you can find lots of information about the programs we'll discuss today, as well as other programs on our website, which is loudon.gov forward slash housing. And with that, we can go ahead and get started. You can advance to the next slide, Melinda. We first just wanted to start with a little bit of information about the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, we are a new department that was established at the end of March of last year, so March of 2022. We have many programs, including those listed on this slide. We have uh, home ownership programs, including our affordable dwelling unit purchase program and three programs uh, that assist with down payment closing costs and lower interest loans for home ownership. We have a number of rental programs, including our affordable dwelling unit uh, rental program and the housing choice voucher program, which we manage for the county. We have home improvement programs, which, which we'll talk about in detail today. We also offer education to the public, uh, things like we're doing uh, this month for Home Ownership Month. Our department is also the recipient of federal funds um, for entitlement grant programs, including the Community Development Block Grant and Home Investment Partnerships. And then last but not least, we also offer two different programs that provide county loans for developers of affordable housing so that we can increase the supply uh, in the county. All of our work is guided by an unmet housing needs strategic plan, which was approved by the Board of Supervisors in September of 2021. And if you are interested in reading the plan or finding out more uh, research or other related information about the plan, um, and also to sign up for updates um, and to view updates on that plan, you can visit loudon.gov forward slash housing needs. And with that, I think our next slide will begin Ryan's presentation and I will turn it over to him. All right, great. Thanks, Chris. Um, just to introduce myself one more time, uh, my name is Ryan Van Patten. I'm the Community Development Project Manager here in Loudoun. Um, so just to you know, start it off here, um, the first one we'll talk about is the uh, Home Accessibility and Repair Program, uh, HARP for short. Um, so this program is uh, provides grants up to $10,000 for to assist homeowners uh, to improve their homes, you know, make repairs, remedy health, health hazards, building code violations, as, as well as uh, provide uh, improvements for accessibility needs. Um, so this program is specifically available to homeowner occupants only. Um, 
They must be 62 years or older or disabled, or there can also be a household member that's permanently residing in the household that's disabled. Um, all households must also uh, have a total income of 50% or less of the area median income. Um, so uh, one of the last slides here will we'll kind of touch on that. There's a, a matrix that kind of provides all the income levels, but it's also available uh, on our housing website as well. So if you ever want to take a look at income levels and, and for different household sizes, uh, you can visit the website too. Um, some of the examples for eligible improvements for the, the HARP program here um, can include things you know, such as repair or replacement of non-working HVAC units or hot water heaters, um, many different accessibility modifications, for example, adding a ramp um, or grab bars in a shower, a bathroom, lowering cabinets, that kind of thing. Uh, as well as making, um, like we mentioned, health hazard improvements or code violations, so electrical or plumbing repairs, um, roof repairs as well. So it kind of encompasses a lot of different uh, uh, type of improvements there. Specific non-eligible items are mold remediation, uh, pest control or removal, uh, the addition of fuel oil heating units, um, and then anything that we consider luxury improvements, for example, we can't go and um, switch out a, a good uh, countertop with a granite countertop, for example, um, or make any kind of additions to a home. So if you don't already have a bathroom, we can't add a bathroom for you. It has to be a, a bathroom that needs to be repaired. Uh, for instance, a broken toilet uh, that needs to be replaced would be eligible. Um, so this is a federally funded program. As Chris mentioned earlier, we get federal funds through CDBG. Um, and so with this specific program, uh, there is an application process that has income verification documents that need to be submitted. Um, and then once we deem an applicant eligible, then we'll have to go through an environmental review that, that's uh, obligated by the, the federal requirements. Um, so I mentioned all that because it can take from from the point of submitting an application to actually going through the process and having the work done, it could take two to three months, just depending on um, you know the different steps involved. That the the largest holdup usually is the environmental review because that can take up to thirty days to do. All right, I uh, can Melinda move to the next one here. So the next program to talk about is the rental unit. Accessibility Modification Grant Program, or RUAM for short. Um, this is a program that's actually put on and managed by Virginia Housing. Um, it's a different agency, uh, but Loudoun County is an agent for them. Um, so anybody within Loudoun County uh, can submit an application to us um, for for this program. Um, who, you know, who's eligible? So this one is for rental units. Um, and specific uh, items are for um, accessibility items. So uh, tenants with disabilities who earn 80% or less of the area median income um, can be approved up to $8,000 uh, for that grant assistance. So different items, uh, for example, ramps, railing additions, um, switching out you know tubs for showers grab bars entry devices all those kind of things to help make um, the situation uh, more livable and easier uh, you know more accessible um, so again this one is specific to uh, rental units um, okay uh, and then actually i did want to mention um, so the the <laughs> one thing with this uh, this one and the next program, since they're Virginia housing programs, an applicant is responsible for actually going out and getting a proposal uh, from a contractor for the work to be done. And so when somebody wants to uh, apply for this program, they'll actually have to have that proposal up front when they submit the application. Um, and I do want to mention Loudoun County can neither provides nor recommends contractors uh, for this uh, specific program. Um, so that would be on on the applicant to find the contractor and, and receive a proposal. All right, we can move to the next one. All right, so uh, granting freedom uh, is another grant program uh, from Virginia Housing. Uh, again, Loudoun County is uh, an agent for this program, so folks that are interested can submit an application to us um, 
for this program. So granting freedom program provides again up to $8,000, very similar to the RUAM program, except this one is open to homeowner occupied and rental units. Um, these modifications are for veterans or service members and uh, the modification would have to be, um, there has to be an identifiable, identifiable relationship between the requested modification and the individual's disability. Um, so again, who's eligible, homeowners and renters are uh, um, eligible for this program. Um, very similar to the last one, you know, we can do such things as widening doorways, adding ramps, railings, any, any kind of accessibility item um, that has some kind of relationship to the disability. And again, uh, there has to be a proposal uh, from a contractor submitted at the time the applicant is submitted or the application is submitted. Um, and again, Loudoun County can't provide uh, or recommend any contractors uh, for this specific program. Okay, we can move to the next one. All right, so weatherization programs, uh, some folks you know, might know it easily or otherwise known as energy efficiency improvement programs. Um, so the county, I wanna include this slide, um, the county doesn't specifically have a program for this, um, but the HARP program can potentially uh, include weatherization improvements, um, but there is uh, um, other programs out there available to Loudoun County residents. Um, so there is a nonprofit com called Community Housing Partners um, that we worked with over the years, and they're a nonprofit in the state um, that they are the state and the, the, the area in Loudoun County. They're the um, weatherization assistance program uh, designee. So that's a federally funded program um, that they can help folks go through to make weatherization improvements. There's also various utility programs. For instance, Dominion Energy has a handful of programs for uh, homeowners and renters. Um, so uh, we don't manage this program. I just wanted to include this. Uh, there is also a link on our website under the resources uh, section to Community Housing Partners website. Um, so you would just go to their website, fill out their application, and then they'll walk you through, um, you know, potential programs that you might be eligible for. There are similar eligibility requirements as our other programs here with median income uh, and age, um, but then there's other qualifiers as well. Um, and uh, this, these type of programs can really improve the, not only the energy efficiency of the home, but the comfort of the home and in turn lowering energy bills is, is kind of the ultimate, um, so, you know, the ultimate uh, idea for these programs. Uh, so improvements include, you know, insulation and attics, walls, crawl spaces, air sealing, making the house tighter, uh, installing light bulbs, repairing or tune-ups for HVAC units, uh, water heaters, and then they also can do some minor health and safety repairs that are associated with uh, those energy improvements. Um, so again, uh, if you're interested in these programs specifically, it would be community housing partners um, that would walk you through that process. But you can always contact us and I can get you connected uh, with the, the proper person too. All right, I think that covers that one. Move to the next slide. So this, I just wanna uh, include this matrix here because uh, pretty much every program does have an AMI requirement uh, for eligibility. Um, so this, th these are effective as of May 15th this year. They do change, they can go up or down depending on the circumstance. Uh, each year, um, the federal government, uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development uh, put out these numbers based on areas. Um, and so for instance, a household of two uh, in order to qualify for the HARP program, uh, with that 50% or less AMI would have to have that $60,850 uh, maximum income. Or uh, for instance, for the RUAM program, say it's a household of uh, five, um, it would have to be that 80% or less, so 131,450. Um, so this, this again is um, linked on our website. So if you're ever interested in going and taking a look, uh, seeing what, um, you know, what the area median income is specific to your household, uh, you can visit our website and take a look or, or you can always contact us and, and we can walk you through it. I think uh, that covers that.
Great. So I think that's the um, that's the last slide of, of content that Ryan's going to provide today. Thank you so much, Ryan, um, for, for providing the overview of those programs. Um, we we really want to make sure that the uh, the community knows that these programs are available and also knows that Ryan is there as a resource overseeing these programs. Um, that's part of the goal in our providing some of these webinars is so that you can meet us as staff and get direct contact information for us so that after today you don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions about uh, the programs we mentioned or other resources just related to the topic. Like Ryan said, um, if the county per se doesn't um, offer uh, a program, we might be able to connect you to another resource that can help. So um, that's part of the reason why we're here today. Uh, we did get a couple of questions in advance. Um, we had asked on the registration for this session if anyone had questions, so we did get a couple of questions, and so I'll go ahead and um, ask those now, and Ryan will provide some information. Um, the first question that we got, Ryan, was, will I be able to add additional rooms on my house, and can I build a fence around my home? So for both of those, I would we would consider those more luxury items. Uh, I kind of mentioned earlier, any additions to a house uh, wouldn't necessarily be covered. Um, but say you had a an existing fence um, that was in disrepair, we could potentially um, bring that up uh, so that you're up to code and, and not violating any code requirements there. Um, but no additions to homes. Again, it would just be for repair work. Or, or improving uh, accessibility to you know, specific rooms. Great, thank you. Um, and then the other question received that we received is, I need assistance getting a stair lift installed in my mother's home. And if you could answer that question, both from the perspective, do we cover stair lifts? Um, and then from the perspective um, of a family member, um, so someone who might be wanting to help their older adult parents apply for these programs or access these programs. Sure, yeah. Um, so I would, uh, we would consider a stair lift an accessibility item so that that would potentially be covered. Um, there is, you know, the, the, the limit just depends on the cost of the item. Um, but from a, uh, like you mentioned, the second question there, uh, somebody helping their parent, whether they live with them or not, um, they would just have to be, you know, fall under those eligibility criteria. So if they're 62 or older um, or have a disability, you know, that that would uh, cover that basis there. And then we would just have to go through and, and de determine the income uh, situation. Um, so if it's, you know, an older parent living on their own, um, you know, that would be a household of one. So the income would be that, you know, specific a household of one. Um, but say it was a, um, you know the the child or you know the the child uh, and then their parent living with them. Um, as long as that adult meets that in uh, the the age or the disability uh, criteria, and then the household of two income threshold is met, then then they they should be eligible. Great, thank you. Um, if anyone in the audience does have additional questions, I've added, um, again, our main ma housing mailbox there, which is housing at loudon.gov. Um, I'm the primary person who answers those emails and I, um, you know, forward those to uh, whoever on our staff might be the best person to talk with. So please feel free to reach out directly to that mailbox. Um, and then Melinda, if you could go to the next slide, I think we have Ryan's direct contact information on this slide. So we'll leave that up there just for a little bit so folks can jot that down. That's Ryan's direct phone number and direct email. And then we also have uh, the main contact information again for our office. So let, let folks take a minute to write that down if you'd like. And then Melinda, you can go to the, I think this is our very last slide. And this just has more information about our office. So we wanted to just let folks know that we do have a physical location. It's at 106 Catoctin Circle in Leesburg. Uh, we also have um, a PO box, our mailing address that's listed there. If you do wanna mail any information to our office, please send it to the PO box, not to the location address because uh, it won't be delivered if it gets mailed to the location address. So if you're communicating with Ryan or if any of, other, any of our other programs in writing, just be sure you send it to the PO box. Um, we, we do also, um, we have a front desk. It's open from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, except for, uh, for county observed holidays. 
We also have in our office um, or in the lobby of our office a blue drop box that is available a little bit before and a little bit after office hours. Uh, that's available from 7 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. So again, if you ever need to drop anything off to us, we have that available um, as an option as well. We check that throughout the day. Um, and so, Melinda, if you could leave that slide up there, I just wanted to also note that um, it is still Home Ownership Month till the end of June, and we um, we do have one more webinar scheduled. It's for next Tuesday, the 27th. Um, we will be joined that day by staff from Virginia Housing. Ryan mentioned that some of our um, home improvement programs uh, are in partnership with Virginia Housing. Um, another program that they offer is the Virginia Mortgage Relief Program. This offers um, mortgage assistance uh, to prevent foreclosure. And so we'll be joined by staff from uh, that program um, next Tuesday, the 27th, also at noon. So if you're interested, please feel free to join us that day and spread the word. Um, and I think with that, Ryan, did you have anything else before we wrap up today? Uh, no, I just, you know, thank everybody for joining us today. And if you ever have any questions uh, about the home improvement programs in general, just, you know, feel free to reach out to me and, and I'll do my best to answer any questions that come through. Great. Thank you so much, Ryan, for the great content today. And thank you all again for joining us. Uh, with that, I think we'll close today's webinar and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks, everyone.